He came up with one of the most famous plays in the history of the Super Bowl, a 100-yard pick six of my buddy Kurt Warner that we can't replay more than enough times on game day morning. In his face, five-time Pro Bowler, two Super Bowl wins, and the only undrafted player to ever win the Defensive Player of the Year award as he did in 2008. The subject of tonight's football life on NFL Network at 9 p.m. Eastern time, James Harrison here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, James? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me on. I think I just did your entire football life, so I don't know if we even need to chat, but I think I just might have summed that one up. (laughs) Hey, congrats. Have you seen the, uh, the, the show yet? Have you seen the piece? Yeah, James. Yeah, yeah, I've seen, I, I've, I've seen, uh, I've seen it, and uh, you know, it's something you, you're not going to want to miss. You get to get a little glimpse into James Harrison, you know, off the football field. So, you know, how did get, you get a better understand? It. How did you get your first break? Like, what did what, what was your first big break, James? Um, to be honest with you, it was really probably Clark Hagen's break in his hand, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> in Pittsburgh to yeah, open up your spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what got me back into because I had been cut, you know, like four times before that, did NFL Europe, all of that. And, um, you know, I'm just sitting around waiting. And then, you know, I done made my mind up that, you know, if I don't get picked up this year, then, you know, that's going to be it. Get a regular job like everybody else. And Clark Hagan, you know, he breaks his hand and they pick me up. And the rest is history, so to speak. What was it like to be a member of the Rhine Fire, James Harrison, after you? You fought your way to the Steelers and then wound up with the Rhine Fire. Um, what what before you know the Ravens they cut you. What so, was that like for you so in what, Europe? So what happened is uh, I went to the Rhine Fire. I was allocated by the Ravens. Mm-hmm. So my first year I was on practice squad with the Steelers. I made the active roster the next year. They cut me the next day. I sat around. Nothing happened. They picked me back up. Cut me again. Then the Ravens picked me up in the off season and allocated me to go to NFL Europe where you do the developmental. So I went over there, and after I got back from that, the Ravens released me in a week because they needed to pick up a tight end. The crazy thing is the tight end that they picked up was Daniel Wilcox. I played with him in NFL Europe. So as I'm driving home, you know, because they didn't release me, I, I get called in. I was like, you know, hey, it's a numbers thing. We need a tight end. Like, all right, you know, whatever. So I'm driving home, and I have my phone rings. It's Daniel. Yo, bro, I got great news. I'm like, yo, what's going on? She's like, uh, I'm going to be there with you at the uh, Ravens, man. They just picked me up. I'm like, oh. I'm like, well, at least I know what tight end they picked up, who they, you know, released me for. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, they just released me to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No kidding. Yeah. What a story yeah. that is. Uh, yeah, Daniel was there for about four, five, six years, something like that. So then uh, you get the big break because... Uh, right. So right. after they released me, that's mm-hmm. when Clark Higgins uh, breaks his hand about a week before training camp. And really what it came down to is they needed an extra body, you know, because the numbers, it threw the numbers off when he couldn't, you know, he couldn't prepare, practice, do anything. So when I got there, you know, I wasn't thinking about making the Steelers roster. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about I need to go out here and put out the best tape that I can and hopefully one of these 31 other teams to pick me up. Well, that 2004 season was pretty big because they went ahead and they drafted a kid, you know, out of uh, Miami of Ohio. So they got a Kent State linebacker and a Miami of Ohio quarterback and look out from there on out. No, I was in 2002. I was undrafted in 2002. Right. I was there two years before then. Right, yeah. and then and then after the Rhine fires when you showed back up in Pittsburgh in 04. Right. Right? Yes, sir. What was that season like? when Ben showed up, because I remember that was our first full season we covered at NFL Network, James, and the conversation was, uh, you know, current, now freshly minted Hall of Famer Alan Fanica is like, yeah, I don't know why we're, you know, our whole season's in in the hands of a rookie, and, you know, I I think there was a hurricane in Miami, and you guys all got together, and the rest is kind of history in that season. James is my memory. You know, I was was young into it, so I don't know exactly what they had going on there, but I mean, you really had a defensively built football team back then that had a good offensive line and they ran the ball. So it was it was a good defense and they ran the ball. And you know, uh, basically at that point in time, Ben was just managing. You know, you right. had you had times where you know it's run, run, play action, and you know he'd hit them for you know huge yards, you know huge numbers. He would only pass maybe you know twenty twenty five times a game, and you know he'd complete sixty seventy five percent of those because they were so heavy into trying to stop that run because of how the offense was sorted that, 
it gave him those great opportunities for play action passes. James Harrison here on the Rich Eisen Show uh, on the Mercedes Benz Vans phone line right here on a, on a busy Friday. Uh, and we'll get to the, the current day uh, in a minute, but I do want to stroll down memory lane for your career. So that uh, that Super Bowl where you're trying to keep the Cardinals out of the end zone, hold them to just three before halftime, what happened on that play where you picked off Kurt? And did you think at some point, oh, my God, I'm still running during that interception, Well, James? It was a max blitz. I was supposed to be blitzing, of course. Everybody knows the story. And I, I don't blitz, but I make sure I step at the tackle so that Norris Timmons can get through on that inside and make sure he gets pressure on the quarterback so he can't hold the ball. Mm-hmm. It's only 18 seconds left. I'm playing for the quick slant in because that's the closest thing to me. That's the you know closest thing I can affect. And as I you know do that and I drop, you know he just throws the ball to me. I'm looking like I'm looking like he's about to throw the ball, and he actually throws it to me. As soon as I get the ball, I'm like, I'm gone. But I'm fighting with the St. Townsend for like for like 30 seconds or something, right? And as I look up, I'm like, holy hell, it's a sea of red jerseys. I'm like, I ain't going to make it. So we make it through the little first little cluster. I jump over a guy, Willie blocks the guy, jump over him. And at that point, I feel like I've been running for like the last two minutes or something, right? So I'm like, the clock is out of time. I have to make it. There's no way I cannot make it. All this will be for nothing. So... You know, it was it was uh, emotions of, of oh, I'm gone as soon as I caught the ball, and then like oh hell, I'm not gonna make it. And then like you said, it was uh, I gotta make it. <laughs> and then you made it, and um, yes, we made it. <laughs> we made, well, I mean, Larry Fitzgerald was trying to track you down. I mean, he was just uh, he was he was right there as well. And so, um, how uh, how did that play change your career? Do you think? At all, at you know, you anything different because of that, James? Uh, I got a better contract than next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's a football life, right there. Okay, so that's right. that helped you get the bank that you were looking for. That's what you're saying. Yeah, it helped help me secure secure my future and, and the, future, the future of my children. Okay, and then uh, obviously your 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 tenure with the Steelers comes to an end. You wound up in new England. How, how different were those teams? One, and, and, and your, and I guess the locker rooms culture, how different were they? Because, you know, we're, we're, you're, you're trying to beat the heck out of them for over a decade and then you join them. Um, how eye opening was that for you? Can you walk me through any differences that you saw James? Uh, you know, the, the big thing in New England is just, you know, especially for guys who say they didn't like it there, it was horrible, da da da. It's for people who aren't used to discipline, aren't used to regimen, aren't used to being, to having to follow the rules of every, you know, every other person. And like I said, I enjoyed my time there. I didn't have a problem with it. And it's the Patriot way because they win. And if you have to do your job and so-called not have fun at it and win, I'm, I don't I don't have a problem with that. Right. So I don't, yeah, I don't, like I said, I enjoyed myself. I had no issues with it. Even when, you know, I got there, I still had a regiment of, you know, body workers that I had come in. They made sure that, you know, if it was something that they needed to do to accommodate room, space, whatever it is, so that my people could be there to work on me, they did that, you know, so... I, like I said, I have no qualms or you know issues with how they operated or did anything. So you, James Harrison, when you joined the New England Patriots, you told Belichick or somebody that, hey, I've got X number of people that are going to personally help me with my training and my physical regimen, and they made the space for those people within their construct? That happened? No, no, not within their construct. Like, say I needed, like, say we have, like, a, like, like Super Bowl, with Super Bowl. Yes. And you have to get, obviously, hotel rooms. So if that space, I couldn't get it, they would help I me to see. get that so that I made sure I could have the people I need there so that I'm able to function and be able to play at optimum level. So it's not like, no, you can't just come to the facility get your own room and have your own. No, nothing like that. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask as because as, cause with, Brady no. return, with Brady returning to New England next week, I mean, that's going to be front and center, James, quite a bit about the TB12 and his trainer and – 
how much accommodation that Belichick and the rest of the organization was willing to make. I mean, you had a front row seat for all of that in 2017, it seemed like. And to be totally honest with you, uh, yeah. I mean, he was there, but I never saw him. His train, Brady's trainer, you mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, they had their own area that they would go to or office, I guess, and that's where he would go get his treatment. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, I believe he even allowed other guys who wanted to, you know, get treatment to to use to use him and so on and so forth. But like I said, it was not like, oh, don't go in this area because Tom and their training. No, it was nothing like that. Right, you, you free flow like a regular locker room. And did you see anything between you know Brady and Belichick that made you think that this is somewhat? you know, dysfunctional in a way? Because, again, this is the sort of stuff that we might be again, hearing towards the again, end. Again, it's, yeah. it's, it's – <laughs> that is all, like, manifest – like, that's just stuff that the media was making up. Mm-hmm. I sat there. I looked for it. Believe me, nothing. <laughs> you they still functioned you, you as looked if. For it. I love that. You looked for Everything was perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, okay, the Patriots have their own stuff going on like other teams do. And I get there, and it's like, wow, I see why it's – us versus everybody, and that's the mentality they use. Because from what I've seen and what I, you know, read, it is night and day from what is being told and what is actually happening. James Harrison. And that's why they bond together and stick together mm-hmm. and thrive the way they do. James Harrison here on the Rich Eisen Show. His football life is tonight at nine Eastern Time on NFL Network. Everyone should check out the fascinating ascension of James Harrison from undrafted player to Super Bowl champion and five-time Pro Bowler, and so on and so forth. What about the current day for the Steelers? Do you think that Big Ben is um, having his diminishing returns right here in front of us, that Tomlin and the rest of this team is in trouble for the year right now, despite being just one and one, it's still early. I wonder what your thoughts on the, the Steelers after they lose to the Raiders and they're getting set for the Bengals and Big Ben's already banged up and it's week three. What are your thoughts? My thing is this. I think they need to... Uh figure out what their identity is going to be on offense. I don't know what that is or what that process is or how you do that. They need to get healthy, of course. And I think it's going to be a defensive team. It's going to be the the Steelers of, of old that, you know, have these tremendous defenses that you try and keep the game low scoring. And at some point in time on the defense, you need to either score, give scoring position, get turnovers, do something that's going to affect that game and keep it close enough so that when that opportunity comes and you take advantage of the opportunity, it will be something that is going to tremendously affect the game and help you win the game. Hmm. And uh, I think you're referring to like Najee Harris, right? Because I, I think they need to establish that kid and run it and make sure that, that – because that, that's when you guys back in the day were the best – you know, when the bus is running over Brian Urlacher in the snow. Right, and when, you start, when you start running the ball effectively, and now instead of them having seven, they need eight in the box and possibly nine. That's when that play-action run, that opens up for that opportunity to get those passes, get those long, uh, you know, passes down the field. And now you get them back to where they're switching back. All right, let me drop them one or two out of the box and then start running the ball again. I mean, I don't know if that offensive line is um, is built. Well, not no. I know it's not built like it was back then, but mm-hmm. they need to find some way to shore up the offensive line so that they can have opportunities like that. James Harrison, I appreciate the call. Um, what do you want people to know about tonight's show? So we let's get them all watching. It's going to be the best football life that you ever watched in, in, in your life. Okay. Um, you know, to be honest with you, they probably could have made this a three-part, you know, <laughs> did three different times because it's so much they're trying to condense into, into just one hour. They could have did three hours easily. Okay. But um, I think they're going to find out things about me that uh, they didn't know, and the uh, perception of me is going to change for them because they'll get a, a glimpse on the inside, so to speak. Well, I'd love to get you back as the season goes along, your, your, your thoughts on the season, and certainly because – one of the members of my team uh, is out today. Uh, he's an audio executive who doesn't really work out all that much. But when he referred to uh, saying that he could plank 225, he meant two plates of 25 pounds, James. And I think, <laughs> and I, think I need... That's good. Listen, it's better than no plates. That is true. Um, but uh, the plates... You start he, somewhere. No, the plates he usually has is full of ziti. And I think I need you to uh, uh, let him know... Um, what what two plates of, you know, tw- you know twenty five? It's really you know two twenty five. And I think I need you to help him do the math. 
next time. <laughs> okay, James? Okay. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll get you back and do that. You. All right, you take care. James Harrison is Football Life tonight, Friday, 9 Eastern time on NFL Network. Thanks again, James. I really appreciate it. We'll get you back. I'd love to chat with no you more. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, James. Take care. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.